Happy Martini Day! Today I'm going to do three of my favourite and most requested martini recipes for you. I'm going to do the classic gin martini, an apple teeny and an espresso martini as well. And we're going to start off with the classic gin martini, which is one of my all-time favourites. So you may have seen me do this one before. Uh, but you'll need a gin. So I've got a London dry gin here, just a supermarket brand. So Tesco, this one. Um, I particularly like some of the supermarket ones um, just to keep costs down, really. Uh, cocktail making can get quite expensive, but you can do it with, with supermarket ingredients. So look out for Lidl and Aldi as well, who have some, some great gins. Um, the Hortus range from Lidl is one of my favourites. But this one is Tesco and will do the job very nicely. And we also have dry vermouth. So this is a little bit more expensive. This is Sacred English Dry Vermouth, which is one of my favourites. Uh, if you like your vermouth, then it's worth looking at. But again, you can go to the supermarket, Martini Bianco or um, a supermarket own brand will do here too. And then classically, it's orange bitters, but you can use Angostura bitters. I've got orange bitters from The Bitter Truth and I have their little sets. So just get little bottles because sometimes you can end up with big bottles of bitters <laughs> that last for such a long time. Um, but I also like to play around with the bitters in my martinis as well. And I've found the Bitter Truth olive bitters are quite nice um, in a martini as well. So we will need a cocktail glass as well. And I'm going to stir this one. So I'm using a mixing glass. And you can shake it if you wish, um, but I much prefer to, to stir mine. Um, and so we're going to go for, this is kind of the, the recipe that I like my martinis made to. You might want to adjust your gin or your vermouth to suit your tastes. But I'm going to go for three shots of gin. You can use vodka here instead if you wish. You could even use a flavoured vodka. And then I use about half a shot of dry vermouth. Now, some people will tell you to um, pour in the vermouth into your glass first, swill it around and get rid of the excess. I actually like the excess within my martini, so I keep it in there. Um, but it's up to you. If you just want that flavour just through it, then just um, swish it around and discard. But I think that's such a shame because some of the vermouths are absolutely delicious and I think work really well. So vermouth into there. I'm not fussy. <laughs> and then two generous dashes of your bitters. And orange bitters is the classic um, recipe. But like I say, do try and, you know, if you've got some other bitters you want to try, it often works so well especially if they complement the botanicals in your gin. So we'll give that a nice stir. I've got, what did I tell you? I've got ice in here. <laughs> so we'll cool that down, about 15, 20 seconds, something like that, but I'm not very good at counting. So we tend to uh, get a feel for when that's nice. If you've had a chance to, then do chill down your glasses and all of your equipment with a martini. Uh, it does help with the serve and then we're going to strain it into our glass. Oh, I just love the smell of a martini as well. <laughs> so clean and elegant. There we go. And with mine, I prefer a lemon twist. So let's put it on. Have a little twist here. So give it a little squish get those oils moving around and you can hang it over the side or just drop it in. You could use a, a slither of um, zest as well. It doesn't have to be a twist. Uh, I just drop that into the bottom and that there is our classic gin martini. Really quick and easy to make and absolutely delicious. Next we have the apple teeny. So this is a lovely, clean, refreshing martini, apple flavoured, of course. And this one is requested a lot by members of the cruise group that I'm a part of, a uh, very popular drink on board p &O Cruises. So this one is adapted from uh, the p &O Cruises recipe. And uh, typically you would use a vodka for this one, but I like to use gin. 
I've also run out of vodka so that's why I'm using gin but it works brilliantly with either. So I've got my Tesco London Dry Gin here. Uh, you'll need some apple schnapps, uh, so apple sours is one brand that you, you usually find in the supermarkets so really good one to use, a great apple flavour, it's like apple sweets, it's lovely. And you'll need some apple juice as well. And so they're the three ingredients you need, so really lovely easy one, but we're going to shake this one. So we've got a shaker with some ice in here. Some people like to put the alcohol and everything in before they put the ice in or vice versa. I just do whatever feels feels right, unless it's a particularly special recipe that um, accounts for it. But uh, we're gonna go for one and a half to two shots of your gin or your vodka. So don't have to worry too much on your measures. You could go for a lemon vodka or even an apple vodka here if you wanted to. So I've gone for two, why not? And then we want one shot of our apple sours. And this gives it a lovely green hue, as you'll see. Oh, I love the smell of it, it smells great. And then two shots of apple juice. I'm going to give it a good shake. There we go. I usually shake until the condensation comes on the outside of the shaker and my hand feels cold. Some people count, but like I say, I'm not very good at counting. I lose track of where I'm at and all sorts. I'm usually talking as I'm doing it as well. <laughs> and then we're going to strain that. Oh, this smells beautiful. I haven't had one for a while. I've remembered why I enjoy it so much. So we pour that in. Really lovely. And typically this is often not served with any garnish so you could leave it like that if you wish however oops, i have got some apple dried apple from the zest co my last piece use it up for martini day so beautiful the apples go beautiful little flowery shapes i'm just going to float that on top so that is our apple teeny i just know i'm going to love this Next we have the fabulous espresso martini, which is one of my favourites for after dinner. And this recipe is one that I've adjusted to the ingredients I like and the measures I like um, over time, really. Uh, there's lots of different recipes out there, but I hope you do try this one and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So I use a vanilla vodka. So I've got Absolute here, but uh, Smirnoff do one, Stolly, Grey Goose, there's quite a few on the market as well. I think even some supermarkets might do their own. Um, so vanilla vodka. If you don't want to splash out on a vanilla vodka, then you could use ordinary vodka and just add one drop of vanilla essence to your, to your cocktail. And then you'll need a coffee liqueur. I really like to use Kahlua. Um, you could use Tia Maria here and there's many other uh, coffee liqueurs as well. Try and avoid the cream ones for this particular recipe but uh, any any coffee liqueur will probably work well. And then a shot of espresso is what we're going to use in here as well. So I'm lucky we've got an espresso machine so lovely fresh coffee. Um, if you've got an espresso or a, uh, is it Dolce Gusto something like that um, a, an espresso shot from those would work well. If you don't have an, that sort of machine you can d dissolve uh, your favourite instant coffee, just a level teaspoon of, of it in about 30 mils of um, hot water from the kettle. Just dissolve that and you can use that here as well. So don't worry if you haven't got all the fancy stuff. It tastes just as good. So we're going to shake this one. I've run out of martini glasses so I'm onto a coupe but you can serve in the martini glass or in a coupe or even on the rocks actually. Um, I do quite like that uh, with this one. So I've got some ice into my shaker. I'm going to go for two shots of vodka, hopefully, if I've got enough left. See what we've got. Ooh, 
just and then I'm going for one shot of Carlua. I've only just got enough of this. <laughs> oh, I've got to go shopping. <laughs> oh, smells lovely again. I love the smells that come around when you cocktail making. It's great. And then one shot of espresso. Like I say, the fresher the better, but don't worry if you don't have that kind of equipment. Okay. And we're going to give it a good shake. again for those of you watching me for the first time um, I'm not a trained barman bar person or anything like that I'm just purely love cocktails and making them at home and I just wanted to really to uh, show people how easy it is to make at home so I don't have all of the <laughs> hints and tips sometimes but this is the way I, I enjoy them so if you can strain that in, you will get some foam that you want to let that settle. A bit like pouring a Guinness. So we'll let that settle a bit, let that foam come up. So it's worth being patient because it will look prettier. I can hear it all fizzing. And then on the top, just for garnish, one or I've only got little tiny coffee beans this time, or three perhaps. I'm just going to pop those on the top. And that is our espresso martini. So normally I'd let this settle a bit more, but I'm eager to try. So those were my three recipes for martini day. The classic gin martini, which was gin, dry vermouth, orange bitters and a lemon twist. The apple teeny, choose vodka or gin, and then some apple schnapps or apple sours, and some apple juice. And then the beautiful espresso martini, which has the vanilla vodka, uh, Carlua coffee liqueur, uh, and a shot of espresso in there as well. So they should take you nicely through the evening. <laughs> so if you do try them, please let me know. Let me know how you get on with them. Send me a picture. I'd love to see how you get on making your cocktails at home. Thank you.